On my resume under miscellaneous, it says PhD neuroscience because I didn't know where else to put it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 smartest celebrities. You finished one year, you went to college. Yes. Uh, and you became a genius? You know, string theory and Schrodinger's cat and all these different scientific things. Uh -huh. Snuck isn't a word, Conan, and you went to Harvard and you should know that. <laughs> for this list, we're taking a look at the most academic celebrities who aren't necessarily known for their high intellect. That means we are not including celebrities like Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's famous for being smart. Who's your favorite smart celebrity? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Rashida Jones. I'm not gonna talk for long because I have to pee again. Because I have to pee every six minutes because I have a beach ball in my stomach that's punching on my bladder. With notable roles in Parks and Recreation, The Office, and The Social Network, to name a few, Jones has more than her fair share of enviable accomplishments. She also has a considerable head on her shoulders as well. So the moral of the story is, if you make out with someone in Leverdol Library, you're guaranteed at least a network sitcom. A Harvard alum, Jones successfully graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Comparative Religion in 1997. She actually had plans to become a lawyer, but the O.J. Simpson trial allegedly jaded her aspirations. Instead, 1997 saw her take her first step into the limelight with a role in the Mario Puzo miniseries The Last Dawn before catching her major break on Boston Public. And things have only been on the up and up ever since. Get out of this office. Get out of my life. Number 19, Emma Watson. Another clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled. You may know her best as the incredibly intelligent witch Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter series, and Watson had plenty of inspiration to draw upon for her role. In 2011, she became a student alongside her acting career, working towards a degree in English literature from Brown University while also studying for a time at Oxford. Watson is clearly quite well-spoken, and her UN Women campaigns more than prove it. The only downside to all this? Trying to avoid imaginary points for Gryffindor from unruly classmates whenever she answers a question. Number 18, Matt Damon. That's gonna last until next year. You're gonna be in here regurgitating Gordon Wood, talking about, you know, the pre-revolutionary utopia and the capital-forming effects of military mobilization. Does life imitate art, or does art imitate life? A young Matt Damon may suggest the latter as his breakout work in Goodwill Hunting told the story of an incredibly talented young man forced to face his past and live up to his potential at MIT. Damon actually began working on the award-winning screenplay during a playwriting class he was taking at, you guessed it, Harvard University. One scene survived actually from that, from what I handed in, what eventually became Goodwill Hunting. This of course skyrocketed him to fame and his light has hardly dimmed since then, but cut short his studies, technically making Damon just short of being a college grad. Take a look past the charisma and good looks, and you'll find a well-spoken, very bright man as well. I hope you'll turn toward the problem of your choosing. I hope you'll drop everything, and I hope you'll solve it. Number 17, Natalie Portman. A globally admired film star, Natalie Portman is just as academically revered as well. Yes, she's got an Oscar, a BAFTA, and two Golden Globes. Driven by these insecurities, I decided that I was going to find something to do at Harvard that was serious and meaningful, that would change the world and make it a better place. But she's also a psychology graduate out of Harvard, and she's fluent in Hebrew. I'm not sure that it's fair to me, I don't live at Harvard, she contributed to a paper entitled Frontal Lobe Activation During Object Permanence, Data from Near-Infrared Spectroscopy, which is hard to say, let alone write. I come up here sometimes when I can't sleep or when I'm trying to reconcile particle data or when Darcy's driving me crazy. Portman once famously said she'd, quote, rather be smart than a movie star. As it turns out, she's doing a seriously good job at being both. Number 16, Conan O'Brien. There's Conan snuck into the room to see I, I, what the- I sneaked into the room. Snuck isn't a word, Conan, and you went to Harvard and you should know that. <laughs> Primarily known as America's longest working late night talk show host before being a celeb interview supremo, Conan O'Brien was also busy racking up intelligence at Harvard University. I spent a very intense period of my senior year writing a thesis called 
literary progeria in the works of Flannery O'Connor and William Faulkner. An esteemed literature and history graduate, O'Brien was president of the Harvard Lampoon Comedy Magazine while he studied. His career as a writer was set out from an even earlier age, though. And uh, anyway, this is me. They found this photo, and that is actually <laughs> me drumming. Get in there, close. Wow. He graduated high school as valedictorian in 1981, having won national awards for a short story of his titled, To Bury the Living. Snuck, past and past part of sneak. <laughs> Number 15, Angela Bassett. Black Panther brought together one of the most gifted ensembles in the superhero genre. Comfort for your loss. Thank you, Nakia. It is so good to have you back with us. Howard graduate Chadwick Boseman became well-versed in Shakespeare while taking Oxford's summer program. Shortly before winning her Oscar, Lupita Nyong'o graduated from Yale with a master's in acting. She wasn't the only Yale alumnus on set. How are you feeling today, Mama? Proud. Your father and I would talk about this day all the time. In 2020, Angela Bassett became the first black recipient of the Yale Undergraduate Lifetime Achievement Award. When we combine a willingness to learn with the pursuit of knowledge, magic happens. The Oscar-nominated actress had already earned a BA in African American Studies, a Master of Fine Arts degree, and an honorary doctorate from the university. There were no sororities on my campus. You know, at Yale, there were secret societies and I was too busy doing my theater thing. On top of all that, Bassett met Courtney B. Vance, who she later married, at Yale. So when you're told you're not good enough, you tell them, not only am I good enough, I'm more than enough. Number 14, Danica McKellar. Winnie Cooper? Since playing Winnie Cooper on The Wonder Years, Danica McKellar has popped up here and there on a few shows and TV movies. Oh, hi, Mr. Gadd. <laughs> Congratulations on those SATs. Uh, the whole faculty's talking. Thanks. One of her most notable guest spots was on The Big Bang Theory. In real life, McKellar could teach Sheldon Cooper a thing or two. You know India? I saw a slumdog millionaire. Well. I'm a slumdog astrophysicist. Outside of acting, McKellar is best known for her knowledge of mathematics. You finished one year as you went to college. Yes. Uh, and you became a genius? She's written several books on the subject, including Hot X, Algebra Exposed, Kiss My Math, and Math Doesn't Suck. It takes a brilliant mind to make math sound interesting, and that's precisely what McKellar has done. I love math because it's challenging. It challenges my brain. It makes, it makes you think. It makes you a better problem solver in life. She's helped to show a lot of blossoming minds, particularly young girls, that math isn't for squares. Unless we're talking about geometry. See, that's math humor. Oh, well, uh, sure, I understand. Number 13, Jodie Foster. Why do you want me to go back to my parents? I mean, they hate me. Why do you think I split in the first place? A film star with a thing for foreign languages, Jodie Foster actually attended a French language prep school during childhood. Quand je, je... Je parle français pendant pas mal de temps. Je... Ça me séduit, c'est la langue qui me séduit surtout. Consistently described as a gifted child, she could read at the age of three and is at least competent at most major European languages. In 1985, Foster graduated magna cum laude out of Yale University, despite the fact that she was already a movie star by then. The 18-year-old actress was taking a sabbatical from Hollywood to attend Yale University. Too often, child stars suffer a well-documented fall from grace, but for Foster, there was less self-inflicted scandal and much more schooling. You fly back to school now, little starling. Fly, fly, fly. Number 12, John Legend. Being one of the few artists to achieve EGOT status, we have to ask, is there anything John Legend can't do? The short answer is no. I wanna change my clothes, my hair, my face, man, I ain't going nowhere. The long answer is that music is only the tip of Legend's resume. Skipping multiple grades, Legend attended high school by the age of 12 and graduated at 16. Although he could have gone to Georgetown or Morehouse on scholarships, as well as Harvard, Legend settled on the University of Pennsylvania, 
Upon graduating, Legend became a management consultant for the revered Boston Consulting Group. I was a management consultant. Yeah, we were doing like what you would expect kids that graduated from Penn to do, and then I was like, I don't want to do this forever. Although Legend learned a fair deal about business and probably could have built a successful corporate career, he kept reaching for the stars. On the side, he wrote, performed, and produced his own music, amounting to a legendary legacy. And I wanted to be those people right. that got discovered when they were, you know, 10, 12, 14 years old and became a big star. But in retrospect, I think it was better for me that it, it didn't happen then. Number 11, Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> An actor who is rumored to have listed his profession as engineer on his passport, Rowan Atkinson can do that because he has a master's degree in electrical engineering from Oxford which is something that's almost impossible to believe considering his intentionally acclaimed forays into goofball comedy. <laughs> Most notably as silent slapstick Mr. Bean and chaotic secret serviceman Johnny English. Johnny English, I'm here to see Pegasus. Still, no sense rushing things. A frequent political commentator and activist, as well as an automobile enthusiast, to the rev good, good, good. It turns out that beneath that famous turkey, there's a marvelous mind. Oh. <laughs> Number 10, John Cleese. Last year, the government spent less on the Ministry of Finance than it did on national defense. Widely listed as one of the great comic geniuses of all time, John Cleese was also overflowing with more academic artistry. It's dead, that's what's wrong with it. <laughs> No, no, it's, it's resting, look. Look, my lad, I know a dead parrot when I see one, and I'm looking at one right now. A graduate from Downing College, Cambridge, he was instrumental in making the university's Footlights Club, a prime breeding ground for British comedy. I mean, they, you're allowed to be an asshole, awful, right, if they want a picture with you. Awful yeah. fawning creatures yeah. coming up to me. <laughs> how wonderful I am, and how can I be yeah. as wonderful as you? Like, f off. In terms of his actual studies, Cleese left with a law degree, but possibly his most important achievement at Cambridge was his befriending Graham Chapman. You stupid, bad brain, flat -headed. Beside a group of other highly educated blokes, the duo would go on to pen Monty Python, one of the most surreal success stories ever shown on TV. Number 9, Shakira. Hailed as the queen of Latin music, this Colombian singer achieved international fame with hit songs like Whenever, Wherever, and Underneath Your Clothes. Whenever, wherever, we're meant to be together. While we all know that Shakira is a lyrical genius, she's an all-around genius as well. A member of Mensa International, Shakira possesses an IQ of 140. Believe it. To give you an idea, the average IQ is somewhere around 100. This shouldn't come as a surprise as Shakira is fluent in multiple languages, including Spanish, English, Portuguese, Italian, and Arabic. Eu adorei você. Eu acho que você é um cantor realmente bom. Muito obrigado. Can you speak Portuguese a lot? That would be cool. Not every seven year old would want a typewriter for Christmas. Young Shakira, however, was intrigued watching her father use his typewriter, which was gifted to her. She used it to write poems, which led to songwriting, which led to fame. But I never would have imagined when I started out that my work as an artist would end up being the vehicle for me to serve my greater purpose in life of working towards eradicating poverty. Number 8, Nolan Gould. On Modern Family, Alex was the resident academic while Manny was the precocious one. Luke, meanwhile, could be a bit on the slower side. Buddy, why do you keep getting stuck like this? I thought I could get out this time. Behind the scenes, though, actor Nolan Gould was the child prodigy. We guess now he's an adult prodigy? With an IQ of 150, Gould was welcomed into Mensa. Discuss about nuclear fusion and our microwaves and, you know, string theory and Schrodinger's cat and all these different scientific things. Uh -huh. Skipping four grades, he graduated from high school by the time he was 13. He spent the following few years primarily focusing on his acting commitments, but he did get a head start with some early college courses. You know, acting isn't a sure thing. You know, we're not set to have jobs for the rest of our lives and, you know, Fame, fame is really fickle, it can like change really quickly. Then in 2017, at age 18, he was accepted into the University of Southern California. Whatever the future holds for Gold, we're sure he'll excel at any path he takes. You know better than to mess with someone so uptight, what do we always say? Don't break Alex, she's our safety net. 
Number seven, Ken Jeong. Your spectacular breasts mean nothing to me. It's not appropriate House. at all. <laughs> Just saying, he could totally lose his license. There's probably a good chance your first introduction to this actor was his side-splitting performance in The Hangover. Is it a surprise to hear he would also be more than prepared to save your life on a minute's notice? Ken Jeong studied pre-med at Duke University and got his MD at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Seven years, I work full time. Not too many actors can transition from a six-figure job at a hospital if the roles dry up. During his early days, Jeong would actually split his time between treating patients and taking comedy gigs before his big break as a doctor in Knocked Up. Do you smoke cigarettes? No. Do you smoke cigarettes? I have on occasion. On occasion when? When was the last time you had one cig? Number six, Gina Davis. Handbook for the recently diseased. Deceased. They say if you say Beetlejuice three times in a row, a Mensa member who's fluent in Swedish with an IQ of 140 will appear. Your excellencies and honored guests, Ers Majestät, det är privilegium att vara här ikväll. While Davis may be most associated with Thelma and Louise in Beetlejuice, she's put her impressive intelligence to good use as well. Notably, Gina received an honorary doctorate from Bates College in 2009 for research on gender studies in the media. Hey, it's not easy to be an Olympic caliber athlete, Academy Award winning actress, and noted genius, but this triple threat has been accomplished. Number five, Sharon Stone. Did you kill Mr. Boz, Ms. Trammell? I'd have to be pretty stupid to write a book about killing and then kill somebody the way I described it in my book. Stone is an Academy Award nominated actress and often remembered for her performance in Basic Instinct, but she's also undoubtedly the smartest person in most rooms she walks into. At age 15, while most of us were working on getting our learner's permit, Sharon was awarded a college scholarship to Edinburgh University, where she studied creative writing and fine arts. I'm not stupid. With a whopping IQ of 154, Stone is comfortably in the top portion of the 99th percentile, qualifying but never actually joining Mensa. It wouldn't be hard. <laughs> it wouldn't be hard at all. Number four, Quentin Tarantino. I don't need you to tell me how good my coffee is, okay? I'm the one who buys it. I know how good it is. Don't get any ideas, but Tarantino dropped out of high school and landed a job at an adult theater. This behavior may not be most typical of a genius, but he's indisputably just that. Yes, a slew of films that are considered masterpieces may indicate his prowess, but the Pulp Fiction director had set himself apart from the rest of the world long before with a nearly unheard of IQ of 160. For reference, this puts him squarely in the 99.996th percentile, right next to legendary theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. Truly a poster child of structured education shortcomings, Tarantino was destined to shake things up from the very beginning. But at the same time though, yeah, there's a lot more to competition, but also those crappy movies aren't competition if the thing is like dynamite. Number three, Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> The on-screen epitome of an action hero, there are considerable brains to back up Dolph Lundgren's brawn. As you can see, Drago averages 1,850 pounds. But that thing so the result's quite obvious. And what results are those? Whatever he hits, he destroys. Best known for playing Russian boxer Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, Lundgren may look tough on screen, but he's actually a master of chemical engineering, graduating from the University of Sydney in 1982. Normally very shy and humble about his Mensa stuff and his IQ, which is up north of 160, by the way. Before that, the Swedish actor had already accumulated a chemistry degree from Washington State and a degree in chemical engineering from Stockholm's Royal Institute of Technology. Dolph Lundgren's intelligence is an international affair. Well, I had a scholarship to MIT in Boston and uh, wanted to finish there and get a PhD and maybe go to Harvard or something, but <clears throat> then I met Grace Jones, you know. Number two, Mayim Bialik. Now, before this goes any further, you should know that all forms of physical contact up to and including coitus are off the table. She played a neurobiologist on TV and she has a PhD in neuroscience in real life. When I auditioned for the part, I, uh, on, on my resume under miscellaneous, it says PhD neuroscience because I didn't know where else to put it on an acting resume. So right. I put it under miscellaneous. Mayim Bialik is a role versus reality match unlike anything else in the industry. When I get back, I'm gonna make you some chicken soup. How does that sound? 
Jewish. After gaining fame as a child star on Blossom, Bialik was brought back into the public eye when she starred as super smart Amy Farrah Fowler on the geek comedy TV series The Big Bang Theory. My most recent paper on how a cooperative long-term potentiation can map memory sequences and dendritic branches made the cover of Neuron. Just a few years before her debut on the show, Bialik finished her studies, gaining particular note as a specialist on obsessive compulsive disorder in adolescence. It's no wonder her on-screen brains are so believable. Before we unveil our smartest number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Lin-Manuel Miranda. It takes a genius to mix history with hip-hop. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came, and the world is gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. Shonda Rhimes. Writing about doctors, lawyers, and politicians requires a sharp mind. You really just start to dissect the pilot. What was the structure? How do they work? How many acts did they use? What were the page counts of each act? Why? Lisa Kudrow. Phoebe Buffay was on her father's medical staff. Okay, normally I would kick you out of my office, but you've got a lot of things going on here, which is good, because Mama needs a new steam shower. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Brian May Having earned fame and fortune as lead guitarist in Queen, Brian May attained an astrophysics PhD from Imperial College London in 2007, after cutting short his original studies in the mid-70s. And I discovered about the formation of the Earth and trilobites and the emergence of life, and I was hooked forever. And I used to beg to be able to, to be allowed to stay up and watch the sky at night. Since then, he's co-authored twice with Sir Patrick Moore and Chris Lintott on Bang, The Complete History of the Universe, and The Cosmic Tourist. In 2015, he was also introduced as a science team collaborator at NASA. It's NASA, ladies and gentlemen, taking us out into the very edges of the solar system, to Pluto and beyond. He's a specialist in zodiacal dust, although that's not what Freddie Mercury was famously referring to. And another one gone, and another one gone. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.